everybody this is dr. Anna and I'm here to uh, help you with the upcoming midterm exam I have decided to make this video for you so it will be a bit easier and you better gonna be better ready for the midterm I opened all the slideshows so let's start with chapter one that was the dynamic earth I'm not gonna open up the slideshow I'm just gonna go through the slides to tell you which ones are really important um, I'm just going through, like you should know what is physical, historical geology, I might ask a question on that, so the sustainable development, remember I already asked this on test one, so a question might come back about it. Uh, the solar system, you should know uh, this life pretty good, and you should know all the planets, of course you don't have to know anything about this area right here, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, especially know something about the inner planets. Remember on the midterm, uh, you can actually write extra credit at the end of the midterm. Anything uh, you learn and I didn't ask. So if I, for example, didn't ask about the, the planets, then you can write something about it and you will get extra credit. So that's a good way to actually gain some points. So these are all the planets right here. And the systems, the different systems, I kind of want you to know what is closed open system and what is the difference and how do we think about the earth is it a closed or open system but of course it's not going to be remember we only have 100 questions yeah I'm going to have 100 questions on the midterm uh, some of them is going to be true false questions some of them is going to be uh, multiple choice but a lot of the questions are going to be <clears throat> short answers or drawings that's why I'm doing this video. It's very important that you listen to uh, the whole whole thing. So this is really important. You should know the, the different systems, the, you know, the atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and you should know something about each anyways. Um, so these are just like for example it's really important to know that the the atmosphere is 78 percent nitrogen 21 percent oxygen I want you to know these percentages the biosphere it's kind of important to know that um, what is the biosphere that we have so many species but most of the species already have extinct so it's just only 10 percent which is on the surface right now uh, the most important of this chapter is this slide right here. But remember, if you watch the um, YouTube video, I have more stuff here. I have the composition of the inner core, the density of the inner core, more stuff about the outer core. So this whole thing is extremely important. It's going to be a drawing questions. So you will have to actually sketch it, and you will have to write everything down. And I know that on the... Uh, YouTube video I have actually done it for you in front of you so please go back that if you don't remember and memorize it this is gonna be one like at least five point question so be done with this first chapter let's go to the second which is the plate tectonics so the plate tectonics you know I kind of would like you to know what is the reason for plate tectonics the convection current so if you know that that's good you have to know the different types of plate boundaries, divergent, convergent, and transform, of course. And, um, of course, you won't have to uh, draw this picture. But if I ask you about the diver divergent plate boundary, please know some about it, like whatever is here. And then, know the example, because I might ask you a matching question, but I tell you the type of plate boundary, and you have to match it. Like, if I said Red Sea, you have to match it to divergent plate boundary. If I said Japan, you've got to match it to oceanic, oceanic plate boundary, and so on. So that matching is important also. So always remember the type of plate boundary and the example for it. So Atlantic Ocean is, is a divergent plate boundary. Remember the only place in the world where you can actually walk on a divergent plate boundary is Iceland. And then the three kinds of convergent plate boundary, oceanic, 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 continental, continent, continent, and you will have to be able to sketch it. 
when you do sketch it, it's important that you know this is the oceanic plate. This is also oceanic plate. This is the asthenosphere right here. And uh, this melts, and that's how the island art forms. Japan is the best example, so you should know that too. This is a better um, drawing of it. You can draw it away. I don't care. And this to show you Japan. Now, the oceanic continental plate boundary is very important that you actually label this plate. Oceanic plate, in this case, this is continental. And remember, the oceanic plate will always go down because it's more dense. Its density is similar to the mantle, whereas the continental plate, remember, is lighter than the mantle, so it can never, never subduct. So this is always, the oceanic plate is always a subducting. Here is the trench. Last example is Andes, so you should know that too. And this just shows you all that. And the continent, continent plate boundary, you don't really have to draw anything here. However, you should know that the example for this is the Alps, which is a collision or like, you know, the two plates going together. The Alps is in between Africa and Europe. And the other one is the, the Himalaya, which is the collision between Asia and uh, India. And the, this is the transform plate boundary. This is where the plates actually are just sliding next to each other. And this always happens along the mid-oceanic ridges. One of the best examples for this is the San Andreas Fault. So if I set San Andreas Fault, you have to match it to the transform plate boundary. And one more to know is the hotspot volcano. This is happening uh, in the underneath of the oceanic crust. And Remember that as the hotspot stays, the oceanic crust moves over there. So you have a chain of volcanoes where the youngest is always above the hotspot. One of another really good example for hotspot is Yellowstone. And uh, this hotspot is actually subducting underneath of North America and still moving down. So right now it's at Yellowstone. And remember, this is the super volcano. And this slide just shows you that. So these are important things, and that's just a, a generalization of the different kind of plate boundaries so you can look at it. And uh, one interesting you can see here is that uh, North America or country USA, uh, up north is oceanic uh, continental, right here it's transformed, and right here it's divergent. So if you walk on the west coast, you can see all three plate boundaries. So that's about plate tectonics. And now the next one is the minerals. And yeah, you do have to know the definition, but it might just be like a multiple choice question or something. Uh, that remember that the the opal has uh, mineraloid is mineral mineraloid. I cannot talk. So it does not have crystalline structure. Uh, remember you got to know those elements you probably will have to know some of the parts of the atom but I assume that you already know it so you don't have to worry remember the atomic number is equal with the number of protons in the nucleus you should know what is isotope that's when the protons are the same but the number of neutrons might change uh, and this is where we talk about stable and radioactive isotopes. I won't go into detail, so don't worry about that. However, you do have to know the, the bonding. So you understand that the outermost electron shell is what we call the valence shell, and the uh, electrons on that shell is called valence electrons. These are the ones which decide the different type of bonding. So this is very important that you know the different bonds, okay? You know the, how the ions are forming. You know what is ionic bond. Remember the keyword is losing or gaining electrons. The covalent bond is the sharing electrons. And when you have metallic bond, that just means that you got free electrons, electron clouds moving through the structure. So I might ask you the, the physical properties of minerals. So you should be able to tell them and say two words about them or three. So these are the physical properties. 
and then I might ask the most common elements, like in form of a multiple choice question or something like that. You got to understand that the two most important is the, the silicate, silica, silica and oxygen, and those two are forming the silicate structures, and you have to know the silicate structures. But please don't come up with some other names. Just use the ones on this slide. Isolated chain, double chain sheet, and framework. That's all you got to know. And of course, you have to know something about it. Probably you should know the ratio and the formula. And please be able to draw these little triangles. I, on the slideshow, when you watch it on YouTube, I actually drew it for you, so it's really, really simple. You don't have to go into much details. So you probably will also have to know the typical minerals in the silicate groups, like the ferromagnesium, and like you would know about olivine that it's a ferromagnesium silicate uh, with isolated uh, silic oxygen structure in it, and so on. So the the pyroxene would be a ferromagnesium silicate with single chain structure. Ferromagnesium means iron magnesium. And then the, the amphibole and biotite. And uh, the non ferromagnesium is the, the uh, muscovite. So if you just know these guys, you're good to go. And then just a little bit about the other minerals. Um, you don't really have to know much. Just a little bit, okay, what is carbonate, what is sulfate, so don't worry much more about it. So these are the minerals. The next one is the igneous rocks. In the igneous rocks, I definitely will ask the, the rock cycle. And this here is the rock cycle. It's very important that not only you know the names on this triangle, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, but you also have to make sure that the, the weathering is going to sedimentary rocks. Melting is going to igneous. So the keywords for that kind of rock is going to the type of um, rocks. Like heat pressure always have to go to metamorphic. Weathering always have to go to sedimentary. Melting always have to igneous. Go to igneous rocks. So I might ask uh, a multiple choice or three fast questions about the geothermal gradient. So you should know a little bit, just a little bit. And this is interesting, but I won't necessarily ask many questions. Except you have to know that the reason that the geothermal gradient is really high here is because it's a convergent oceanic continental plate boundary up there. And as it goes down, it actually melts. And so therefore, it's active, active plate tectonic area. So therefore, the geothermal gradient is higher than there than like let's say on the east coast where there is nothing like this so therefore the geothermic gradient is a little bit lower. So the melting temperature, I might ask a um, uh, true false or some question about these things right here. But remember if I didn't ask anything, you can write it down as extra credit. Differentiation. Um, Basically, what you really have to know is the bounce reaction series right here. This is something you really have to know. Actually, I kind of would like you to know the one I drew it on the YouTube um, when I did the slideshow. So, but if you just do this, this is okay also. The type of magmas, it's very important that you know this group. Ultramafic, mafic, intermediate, phasic, with the uh, percentage of SiO2 in them. And remember... The SiO2 is, is actually every in every mineral. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to do anything with the quartz. So it's not quartz content. It's the silica and oxygen content of the different silicate minerals. Uh, if you would know the different, based on the partial melting, so if the temperature never gets higher than 1,000 degrees, let's say, then mostly the minerals will melt, which are on the lower part of the the bounce reaction series. So that takes us to the um, plate tectonics. And if you know what kind of temperature you have in certain situation, then you understand what kind of rocks are going to form. So you know that this is ultra mafic, this is intermediate. And whenever anything happens with the continental crust, that's always going to be phasic. The viscosity, you know, this is kind of 
uh, important to understand, but I would ask but one or two questions about it. But remember, the higher the temperature, the lower the viscosity. The higher the SiO2 content, the higher the viscosity. Uh, on the test two, I already asked about the textures of igneous rocks, so um, that's kind of important, so you should know it. If I didn't ask anything about it, then you can always write it down as extra credit. And um, I already told you about the, the classification. I, I really want you to know each and every single rocks, know something about them, and um, I will have a big matching on the rocks. So if I said granite, granite, you have to match it with igneous, felsic, phaneritic possibly. So it's important that you know all the rocks because they are part of the, um, the rocks. So therefore, when you take the, the rock quiz, please make sure that you don't actually look up anything because you're practicing for the midterm, basically. So that's about, and I might will ask questions about what is dioxylacolate, so you should go through those two. So that was the igneous rocks, and now the volcanoes. Here is the volcanoes. The volcanoes, um, you know, the beginning of the volcanoes are just stories, so I won't really ask questions about it much. However, you should know the gases in the volcanoes. Um, you should know what is the aerosol and, you know, that it actually causes the acid rain and actually it causes the global cooling because it shuts the sunlight. Uh, and then the next slides you should know for sure is this. You have to be able to make difference between the, the mafic and the basaltic and mafic is synonym. Remember, because the mafic rock is the basalt, so when I say mafic or basaltic, it doesn't make a difference. They are about the same thing. And the felsic or rhyolitic is the same thing. So I will ask on the test, what is the difference between the mafic and felsic lava flows? So I won't really ask much about this, but if you, if you know it, you can always write it down as extra credit. Yeah, so let's go down. I might ask like a uh, true, false, or multiple choice question about the columnar basalt or lava tube and uh, stuff like this. But then I might ask a true, false about these, the sizes of the ash, lapilli blocks, and so on. Um, you should understand the magma type, temperature, viscosity, and eruption. So you know if it's a mafic, it will always be non-explosive. And if it's a felsic, it's always going to be an explosive volcano. This is quite important. I will <coughs> definitely not ask this, but it's just interesting to see the difference between these guys. And um, So it's kind of interesting, as I already told you. The types of volcanoes is very important, uh, so you should know them, the flood, the salt, all these guys. Actually, if you just know this one slide, it tells you all. And the types of eruption is right here, so if you know that, that's good. And please, please remember the VEI, the Volcanic Explosivity Index, so you know that Yellowstone would be a BI-8, and if you watch the movie, it was right in. Just a little bit about the volcanic hazards, it's kind of interesting. So, <clears throat> that was the volcano chapter. So, let's move on to the sedimentary rock chapter. This is important that you know the process of the weathering, transportation, accumulation, and diagenesis, and... Um, what is the difference between physical and chemical weathering? And just a little bit of all that. The sedimentary structures, remember if I ask the sedimentary structures, these are the ones you got to know, okay? Um, and then you have the classification, and you should know that we have the clastic. Important that quartz and clay are the most durable um, minerals on earth so they will never go away on the surface condition 
You should know the grain size chart. It's quite important, even in the raw quiz. Uh, I do say sometimes the, the grain size, so you should know it. And of course, you should know the different types of racks. Like, for the rack quiz, and you also have to know on the uh, bitter. And these were the sedimentary racks then. And the next one is the metamorphic racks. You should know what is metamorphism, the major concepts. The, that the temperature and the pressure are the most important. The temperature has two rules. One is the that the rocks become unstable, and the other one is that it defines the reaction rate. The pressure that we have, the confining or hydro hydrostatic, and we have the dynamic or directed pressure. And of course, the, the chemical activity with the fluids also very important. The texture, you just have to know foliated and non-foliated. And uh, the porphyroblasts, I might ask a question about it, but if I didn't, then you can write down, remember, extra credit. And then, of course, the PT diagram. This is kind of important. I might ask this, and if I do, it's going to be like a three, four, five point question, so you should know this. Please make sure. I know on the YouTube video I did draw it, so... You should go back there and, and uh, do it and memorize it. The contact metamorphism, just know what it is. Um, and, of course, the regional. And these are your rocks. So you, remember, you have got to know these rocks. I guess she is, yeah, you have to know them all. For the rock, is, it's important to know what is the index minerals. Those are minerals which are characteristic at certain temperature and pressure range. And these are the... If you start with some kind of parent rocks, what kind of rocks are forming if the temperature and pressure is increasing? Okay, so that's the metamorphic rock. And the very last chapter is the weathering. Now, the weathering is pretty important, and I, uh, I have the different type of physical weatherings. And so you have to know the different physical weatherings. I might ask you, please list and characterize the, the physical weatherings. And then um, these are the ones you have to talk about. On the other hand, there is the chemical. And the chemical weathering is very important also. And these are the three kinds. If I ask it, you have to tell me about it. So not only list it, but you also have to characterize it. So know what is this solution. Know what is the pH. That's important. And know what is hydrolysis, and I have talked about it, so it's kind of important. It's right here. <coughs> Remember the swelling clay? It's kind of important, but um, if I didn't ask anything about it, you can always use it as extra credit, just like the swelling clay right here. Like, how do you know that it's swelling clay underneath? And the prevention, of course. Geometry, you should know what is spheroidal weathering, of course. And then you should know a little bit about how the different rocks are weathering. And it's important that the, like on the bounce reaction series, the top part is the least durable and the bottom part is the most durable. So that's kind of important. And that the climate, the rock composition, climate topography will define and I have these examples here. Um, the differential weathering you should understand. And then the soil. The soil uh, is very important. You should know this figure, the soil profile. I might ask you to draw it, and then it's a three, four, five point question, so it's important. If you just know this drawing, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about this part that much. And the different soil to, uh, profile, no, at least this one, uh, the laterite, perofet, perocal. So remember this one is, I think on the YouTube video I did write uh, down all of them and I told you which one means what, so just go back and watch that. Uh, you don't really have to know much about the human body and the pH for the midterm, but I think you should know that for yourself. So if you know it and you write it down, I will give you extra credit. So I guess this is it, and I hope that uh, it was helpful. 
and uh, good luck on your midterm. Bye.